Yeah, Coach, what are um, uh, any medical updates after that one? Um, obviously, you know, AK didn't finish the game. Uh, hopeful he'll be all right, you know, because he's dealing with with the wrist injury. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try some different things to maybe a different brace here or there and see, make sure, check again to make sure there's nothing ounce lingering with him. But, and then the, the ones that couldn't make it back, uh, Felipe, yeah. I guess, was the Felipe, one. Felipe, you know, came back. Juma, you know, we'll see how the week goes. Chance to get, you know, Elijah back at practice. We'll have to see how that goes towards Wednesday. Um, who am I missing there, D-Lad? You got Juma. Uh, um, AK went to the game. Mm -hmm. Juma and Felipe did oh. not. Dalton, Jay, 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 Jay. Yeah. Uh, the same thing. We'll just have to see how it responds by Wednesday. But uh, you know, day to day, and all those guys. Yeah. After the dust. Oh, go ahead, man. Yeah. Just to just to be clear, so it's a wrist injury, not a forearm for forearm. It's okay. semantics. Right here. Somewhere in here. <laughs> right down here. Well, okay. Without getting too specific. It's not the it's not the first well, forearm. I mean, it's, 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 it's all attached. It's all yeah. attached. Right. <laughs> Don't put it's more on the lower part. Sure. <laughs> In terms of, so are you going to then activate Elijah or? You just have to see how it goes. Elijah? We got to see if he's ready to practice Wednesday. And then obviously if he is ready, see how he looks by the end of the week. You know, it's, you know, a little bit like CP where they come back after a month, you got a better shot than a guy that's been off for three months. Well, yeah, and just to be clear, so you're planning on at least starting that window on Elijah? We'll, we'll have to see, you know, how it goes about Wednesday. But he has a shot, I guess is the best way to put it. Okay. We're just not ready to make, make that decision today. Uh, obviously, we'll, we'll have more discussions about it and with Elijah and, and the medical team. And But he has it. He, there is a chance. You know, the window's open for him, and he's made good progress. But even if he gets out there, it doesn't guarantee that he'd play. I know you addressed this yesterday after the game. Mm -hmm. The benefit of film looking at it with that goal and go situation at the end, three timeouts. You wish yeah, there's a lot, the ball there? There's a lot that goes into it. You know, you've been in those situations if – Certainly your thought's different if, if a field goal wins it, right? You're down two, or even if you're down three, being risk adverse. Uh, and I say that meaning like you call a run, you score, you're going to have the same, same issue. That you're, you're happy you score a touchdown, but you're going to have to turn around and still have to defend. Right. Uh, you'd love to have it where you score a touchdown with one second, there, no time, and kick it and go home. And so when you're, you're down six, you're going through the thought process. You call, you call a run play, uh, the first play, you lose two yards, now you're second and four. You know, runs you like, there's also, you know, passes. So do you, do you pass it on? Probably going to have to have the pass it if you, don't, if you don't get it in at some point, whether it's third or fourth down. And went with uh, that's those are decisions you make. So you go with the decision right there to, to get them in. A, you're pretty confident in what you're going to get. And we got it. But unfortunately, they made a play. And so you live with that decision. And it's one thing if you get wired. You call a pass, you're wired, play extension, throws a pick. Um, you know, I've, you know, people bring up different references, you know, hey, this, it's like saw this happen in a big game or ball gets picked on second down. I mean, we've all, we've all seen it. I mean, those are obvious things, and those are, those are, you know, bang, bang. I mean, these are ones where different scheme, different situation, time left in the game where you feel like you got pretty good with two of your better players or – You've schemed it up with, with Patterson and Drake. But unfortunately, they got a pretty damn good player on the other side that battled all day with and uh, Deron Payne. And he tipped it. And not only did he tip it, the ball bounced to Fuller. Not that I want you to have a ball, but do you think any solace in being able to run the ball that well all game long in that defense? Well, you know, you go into that, and that, that is a good front. But we also feel like we're, we're building something here up front in our mentality on the offensive line. And there isn't moral victories, but there's – it does give you confidence week after week that these guys have stepped up and no matter, and we played some good fronts. I mean, it is the NFL and everybody's good. I got that, but we played some of the better ones. I mean, I you know played San Fran. I know they didn't have Bosa, but that's a damn good front. Um, and then yesterday, I mean, they were playing as well as anybody in the league. And uh, low possession game. I thought we moved the line of scrimmage pretty well. I thought we had some really good pockets, staying on track where the, you know they didn't get. They had the one sack on us. Uh, tried to be. Aggressive, um, wasn't there. It wasn't like we initially, they collapsed it right away. And then obviously we, we took the sack. It looked like with you guys, you 
I know you talked a little bit about it yesterday, but replacing Kyle in the lineup, it looked like almost like it was like maybe four or five guys took on different parts of his role. It, was it that many? Was I seeing uh, just, you know, you just evolve. You know where the game plan's at. We, we can play in a lot of different personnel groups, and you ask guys to do different roles to try to play to their strengths. And um, and that's kind of how it you know, went. I mean, the scheme you're playing in a defense that relies on the front, and they probably played more on top than they had. I mean, a lot of times when you're in a heavy rushing game, you get these guys that stop, they're, they're up there at eight yards. I mean, I've lived that world too, where you got to make sure you got to get something over the top. And certainly we tried at times. And um, I think with all the personnel groups we were running and some of the motions they were trying to just keep it out and rely on their front. And so that was the kind of the game that within the games that were going on. Even their third down plan changed as the game went on. And that's kind of what was going on. I guess what saying is like going forward too. I mean, is it going to be a week to week thing of maybe how you try and figure out to replace what he did or do you kind of have a better idea? It's not like that. Work? I mean, you, you just got, you're dealing with what, what you got available. Yeah. So it's not, it's never a one for one. I mean, that's just not, that's not, reality that's not practical so it's our job to make sure to play to every advantage we have and you know protect where you think you might have a disadvantage and neutralize their their strengths and attack you know what you think you or their weak points and that's kind of what it is and so um we have a lot of guys that can play multiple roles and i thought yesterday if you're talking about the tight end position you know we asked Pruitt to do a couple of things we asked Ferkser and certainly Hesse who's done a, done a lot of the Call them the, the hard jobs all year. Having a guy like CP though, who can, you know, you've moved mm -hmm. him all, all over the place really. Does he does he play into that as well? Because it maybe he was spread out a little bit more. Well, you're trying to find production everywhere. You know, he caught the, the crossing route. Um, obviously, with Drake and making sure that try to find different ways and uh, get him involved. I mean, OZ yesterday. You know, some of the stuff that we were doing with Drake, it opened up some things for OZ. You know, the big play he had at the end of the game. Well, they played over the top. Two guys run with him. OZ comes out of it. And uh, we're able to hit him for, for the explosive that got us down there. And so that's the give and take with it. There's just different ways. Like, it's just, I just, it's not going to be one for one. Sure, yeah. And you just got to find different ways to play to where you think the strength is and what the game plan to allow yourself to win. And obviously, we didn't, we didn't yesterday, but we were able to give ourselves a chance at least. CP uh, had five targets. Was that a function, part of part function of that also? That was uh, yeah, and, and some of those, you know, you get them um, multiple ways to try to find them the football to get them the football, uh, rushing attempts and things like that. And it's not just targets. I mean, that's what shows up on the on the stat sheet. Um, you know, sometimes you you call a play with a guy being a primary. For example, with Drake, you know, where a lot of those where he may be the primary. But the ball's not going there for whatever reason. Maybe it's because of the coverage and you got to progress. The example I just gave you with OZ, um, that happens a lot too. And you may call a play, the guys with the primary, but they have a say, they can change it up, and you've got to have an answer. You can't say, oh, I'm only going to call it for this call. And you could do that and have three checks on every play, but you're going to play pretty slow. So you've got to be able to progress and, and have answers, and that's what we try to do. Uh, one other injury guy was Caleb Hunter. He only had one carry. Is that, was that a function? Kind of a function of the game. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, you had one good run. Yeah. I know. It's, you got to try to find ways. I mean, that's, that's a good problem to have. All right, how do you – because Tyler's playing really well. We know the impact CP has. It's a, it's, that'd be a good problem to have, and we got to make sure – because he's earned the right to carry the football for us. And you get in the game, and that's where we got to take the next step. But we're in a lot of these low-possession games. Some of it are our own fault, and they have a say. And that one right there, you know, time of possession, or we only had 57 snaps at offense. To go back to that Golden Go situation, mm -hmm. um, the argument that I've heard from fans on Twitter, maybe maybe some Russian <laughs> bots sprinkled in there, is that you know you can kind of eliminate the clock if you run the ball in that situation on second down, and then you know you can if you score potentially right. I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> no, right, right, yeah. I mean, the, no, these are great subjective arguments. Yeah, There's yeah. never the perfect answer. You're trying to you know when you need a touchdown, we got to find a way to score the touchdown first and foremost. You'd love to have your cake and eat it, right? It, like I just gave you the example. In a perfect world, you'd love to call the play at one second, score, kick the extra point, walk off, and never have put the defense out there. Absolutely. So when you're, you're taking, there's a risk every time you're making a play call. So say you do dial a run in there. We score. 
you're going to have the same position you're going to be in. So when you had the three timeouts, and so I, no, I get it. And I've been in that before. And if you have a timeout, if, if we just needed a, a field goal to win it, you're probably going to kneel down there, you know, until you get it and you bang the timeout and you, and you walk off. Or even if you're down two, you could play it completely different. Even down three, right? Maybe it makes you a little more um, conservative there. And I understand that. And you're calling what you think is your best call and a way to get the ball to, to your best players. And that's the risk you take, and that's what you live with. Not only to get tipped, it does, you know, even if the ball hit the ground, yeah, it would have stopped the clock. It would have. And not only to get tipped, it bounced, bounced to them. So you, you, you live with that. I get that. But you can't call a run there. And if we score, we're going to have the same problem. But the thing, at least we had the timeouts. As painful as it was, we had to go play four-minute defense. And then, obviously, we got the penalties, so we never got the ball back. Let's talk about close games for a second. Just, you know, last year, you guys went seven and two in one score games. All seven of your wins were. Yet in eight other games, you were, by definition, blown out by at least two or more scores. This year, four and five in close games. There were only three games decided not by two scores, and you won one. Really, there's only one game this year you weren't really in. Yes, you know, since. I mean, I, I, winning close games is a product of execution, coaching, a whole bunch of other things. Like, what do you take from either regression or what's different this year about not winning yeah. those close games? Uh, do you even yeah. study that? way this thing is trended it's you know last year I mean it was completely different some of those scenarios sure. we're in different where, roster, yeah, yeah different roster a lot of things like even someone that came down that's technically one possession games but they're in the Jets right well that was one of the one possession game we were in control the whole time we Mike Davis scores they get a touchdown late they kick on side it was never really they weren't the side, same type of games we've been in this year um it feel like that Miami, right, where you, we were in control, and they and think about the last year, the difference, completely different team. Where this year, you know, even the Carolina one, they kick a field goal late to technically made it a two possession game. The, the Thursday night game, it was really a one possession game. It's just there's a lot of ways, a lot of things that goes into it. Even yesterday, the ball not only gets tipped, it gets tipped and bounced right to him. TQ picks up a fumble in a crazy game, and the ball comes out, and it's a double fumble. You know, it's like nature. Uh, you know, Carolina, they had, you know, we had multiple chances to win that first one at home. Multiple chances. We got lucky that they kicked it. I mean, that's kind of what, what's uh, been the story of a lot of games this year. I feel like we're executing a lot better. We've made a lot more progress in a lot of key areas that have given us a chance situationally. But, uh, but that is the end result. And so I understand the question, but I think it, they're two completely different scenarios. Uh, I believe we're a much better team. We're a pretty disciplined team. Knock on woods, we're not very – we don't get a lot of penalties. We don't have a lot of mental errors. Now, do, does that make you feel any better that you're five and seven? No. But we have a chance. And these guys, no matter what's happened, they're grinding it out. And it's going to pay off. And it has paid off. I mean, these, these young guys, and they know what it's like to be in pressure. I mean, that's what the world we live in. I said, use this reverend for Like, where we are right now, we play in the mud, and we're going to fight you and do everything we can to throw at you to make sure we can have a shot to win the game. Uh, how, multiple times <laughs> over the last cycle. how much of that is a function of what you have offensively versus maybe trying to protect the defense a little bit? What's uh, it going to take? I mean, you don't feel like you got Your matchups may be in the, on the perimeter or maybe, you know, where you're at. Um, with the pressure, I mean, a lot of times if you bring a lot of pressure and you play a lot of man, you turn your back to them, you can give up explosive quick. And that's that's a risk assessment on the other side. How you want to play, who you're playing, what the game plan is. And you know, the last two weeks, we've played a lot of – we played two quarterbacks that can extend plays. They're very different players. Um, we have a different group of skill guys from Chicago to, to yesterday, which is a pretty talented group outside. And um, they were able to extend some drives. We played pretty well in situational football. It gave us a shot. You know, you hold somebody 19 points, as ugly as it may feel at times, you know, in the, in the run game and in the way they had the clock, we gave ourselves a chance. So there's a lot of things we can improve, run defensively, run fits, things that are realistic, not just coach speak. That'll be, a, a, that'll be our, you know, charge this week with a game that, I mean, it's crazy that we're still in the situation. I feel like a broken record where we were two weeks ago, where we were yesterday. And the way the schedule is, and in a perverse way, it's you have a late bye, and 
your half game back in the NFC South or however that worked out. So it's a unique opportunity, I guess. Yeah, you, you've said unique opportunity a few times. I mean, is there any point where you're just looking to be like, I'm still in? Like, <laughs> at five and seven, I'm like, you're still in this very in a very real way and not kind of. That uh, happens a lot. I mean, even walking off the field yesterday, um, you know, when I was in there in 07, I mean, I, you know, as I, you know, they were honoring Sean Taylor, and I was part of that season, and and we were sitting there. I think we started five and three, we lost four in a row, including uh, that Buffalo game. We were sitting at five and seven, and we ripped off four in a row and got in the playoffs. I mean, it just it happens in the NFL. It happens every year. It's you make it hard on yourself for damn sure, uh, but we are. I mean, that's the reality of the situation. Getting better on defense on third downs. I know you were a little bit better yesterday, but it seems to have been a problem throughout the year getting yeah. off the field on third down. How are you grading that? Well, a lot of it's we've changed some things we're doing too, and that's part of the coaching. I mean, you, it's a fine line of improving, you know. But if you're going to continue to get beat on the same things, you better damn, you better change it. So we've tried to adapt. You know, we've had a, a lot of different bodies up in there inside. Uh, these guys are grinding in there, and we're trying to find different ways to try to. To affect the quarterback and uh, whatever matchups we have outside, and um, it was good to have AJ back. I feel like he, he's, you can see him getting back to speed. He made some good plays yesterday on third down, and um, we'll continue to try to work that week to week. Uh, Drake had 216 yards receiving in the first three games of the season. I think he's at 224 since. Is there anything that you can attribute that to? Um, yeah, there's a lot. Of um, obviously, he's a huge part of, of our offense, and we'll continue to find ways. I mean, the, the numbers are what they are. Uh, he's had a big impact, and we'll continue to always do a better job if I find, you know, whether he's the primary or not. If the ball's not going to him, okay, why is it not going to him? And so what can you do differently? And, you know, he's – like most rookies, there's some things he's, he's got to figure out, but he, but we're very pleased where he's at, and we can t continue to find ways to get him the football. And I gave you an example in a critical moment. His number's called. They cover him. Somebody else has got to win. And, you know, like I said, the, the play that in the last drive, um, yeah. So we'll continue to work work at it. Uh, it's not for a lack of trying, but certainly we can do a better job. Is there an element of that where he's new to the league, teams may not know how to optimally defend him? No, I think no. a lot of people are trying to defend. I said yesterday they, they, they played over the top a lot of things that, probably try to protect some of their corners or probably try to protect some of the things we were doing pre-snap or having to defend defend the zone read. That, that can certainly change your coverage because that can change your run fits. you got to add, add an extra, uh, you know, somebody's going to have to play two gap, give or take, depending on the scheme behind you, even in, in post-safety defense. So that certainly can change the way that they may play coverage-wise. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. Did AJ kind of keep McLaurin under control? Well, I mean, you know, they they kind of they came out and they 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 threw the ball a lot early, and then obviously you guys were all there. The game went on. I mean, Robinson got going, and they grinded out a lot of long uh, long drives. So I don't probably pretty similar to Drake. You know, whether that I don't have Scott Scott Turner's call sheet, but I'd imagine that you know he focuses on Terry. But same type of thing. They were running the ball well, and uh, you know there was a couple of plays that. Thought we made it were pretty good. AJ, the one that the interception that you know, obviously the ball hit the ground. This week, uh, similar to when you faced the Bears weeks ago, how much college shape you look at for Kenny Pickett, or is that out the window at this point? Given you, I think you got to kind of see what they're they're doing. Uh, we certainly have, like all these guys, which is why I think it's important to whether you take a guy, you need to you don't skip steps. They obviously you need to learn the league because you know, again, you only have a certain number of picks, and you got to know who who's coming in and what their strengths and weaknesses and you kind of see what they're doing as a pro. So um, it's not necessarily going back and looking at college tape. There's enough now where you, you got a good feeling, but you certainly know what, what it looked like at University of Pittsburgh.